In celebration of National Canadian Film Day, I've chosen to present some bonus material content for KQEK.com, featuring an edited version of the engaging and amusing Q&A with actor and artist Stephen Lack, and now magazine senior film writer Norman Wilner, that followed the April 20th free screening of David Cronenberg's Scanners at Toronto's Royal Cinema. National Canadian Film Day was created by Real Canada, a non-profit organization that promotes and celebrates Canadian film and film culture with free screenings, Q&As, and other salutes across the country. Their mandate is to engage and instill a sense of pride in our homegrown industry that's faced tough battles against Hollywood Studios' control of cinema chains, investment challenges, and the difficulties in a film getting screen time, promotion, and even an HD home video release. To compensate for rather hellish distribution issues, Real Canada has an extensive catalog of films that are available to educational institutions, including many films still not commercially available on home video. Full details are available at canadianfilmday.ca. I'll have more thoughts on our distribution conundrums at the end of the Q&A, topics that will recur in my next podcast on Canada's first feature-length 3D horror film, The Mask, But for now, listen to Stephen Lack discussing Scanner's 35 years of cult fame, blowing up Louis Del Grande's head, co-star Patrick McGuhan, director David Cronenberg, makeup whiz Dick Smith, and The Rubber Gun, a 1977 film co-written by Lack and director Alan Moyle, which is currently seeking a Canadian partner in assembling a special edition release with rare materials from Lack's own private archives. What you need me for is to introduce our guest of honor this evening, Mr. Stephen Lack. You look my own. You're looking well. Thank you. You a lot worse at the end of the movie, but you look okay. I recovered. It's good. We're all very I'm in recovery. From scanning people? It's the ephemeral habit, I assume. Scanning yeah, people is all right. It's when you get scanned back that's a problem. That's true. It's a feedback thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of curious now, 35 years later, how it, like how it feels to be so associated so closely with such a... like It is an iconic film for Canadian cinema. Outside of Canada, it was this weird little movie. But here, it's just never really gone away, mostly because my client's side blows up Louis Del Grande in the first five minutes, and everybody else is just like, the guy from seeing... The, oh... So what's it like the carrying that around now? <laughs> yeah, 35 years later, we're still talking about it. Actually, I mean, uh, I don't want to pump it up too much, but uh, Scanners is not just limited to Canada. No, but like, it's just... No, 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 I, I mean, like, all the American networks, if, if you... I don't know if there's such a thing as a history of television, mm. but every year, or a couple of years, during ratings week, Right. Whatever Fox Channel or whatever, for years, Scanners has been on their program and they use it to boost ratings. So whether it's for that unusual uh, scene in the end or at or in the beginning when Mr. Del Grady gets it, um, and the story behind that is amazing. I, I, there's there's a, a great artist, I don't know if anyone's uh, who did one of the most reprehensible pieces, uh, and, and he got banned by the NEA, the National Endowment of the Arts, um, Andreas Serrano. Oh, yeah. Piss Christ. Piss Christ. I can say it. I didn't want to say it. You can I say, say it. it. I write for now. So every time I see him, he's usually, or he used to, now I think he's settled down, but he used to have like two stewardesses, one on each side. And he'd always go to the stewardess, he says, this is guy from Scanners. Oh, do you know Stephen? He's from Scanners. And, you know, the girls were like, oh, oh yeah, wow, like, you know, they knew nothing. But I got to tell you, I mean, yeah, I got a lot of cue from him. So there we go. Stephen Lack, thank you so much for coming. Happy National Canadian Film Day. Let him hear it. And remember, you don't just have to support Canadian cinema this one day. Go buy Scanners on Blu-ray. The Brood is out too. It's very good. Just buy whatever Canadian movies you want to. Go, go see stuff. There's all kinds of great stuff playing. Have a good night. Thanks to Real Canada, Toronto's Royal Cinema, Now Magazine, Norman Wilner, and Stephen Lack for presenting a great Q&A. 
Special editions of David Cronenberg's Scanners, Videodrome, Naked Lunch, Dead Ringers, and The Brood have been released by Criterion in packed special editions. While Lack's art can be seen at stephenlackart.com, his films are part of a huge swathe of Canadian movies essentially available nowhere. Besides airing on cable TV and long out of print if any home video releases, Montreal, Maine, L'Ange et la Femme, The Rubber Gun, Head On, and A 20th Century Chocolate Cake are orphan films, just like the Patrick McGuhan Alexis Canner movie Lack was mentioning in the Q&A, a political thriller called Kings and Desperate Men, which was filmed in Montreal and at the Olympic Stadium. Some of these films are available on YouTube, which seems to be the lone place orphan films can be found, as no one north of the 49th parallel seems willing to restore, preserve, and make available these movies on physical or digital media for purchase. Yes, people would really like to buy these films. Art films and cult films tend to come from American labels, whereas tax shelter movies, good or bad, are tougher to track down. Witness Shadows in an Empty Room, otherwise known as Blazing Magnum, that was recently released via Scorpion Releasing and Kino, and Curtains and Prom Night from Synapse Films. A classic example of an orphan film is Joshua Then and Now, Ted Kotcheff's feature film version of Mordecai Richler's hysterical novel. 20th Century Fox released the film on VHS via their budget line imprint Key Video. CBC owns the rights to the longer TV version that features more footage but no potty words, and yet this late-night TV mainstay is now run infrequently. The soundtrack album was released only in France because its composer is the esteemed Philippe Sardes, but the movie has never been released in a longer, uncut, widescreen edition. When the film did emerge this week on DVD, it's as an on-demand import that retails roughly for $22 from Fox. This title has to be imported and sells for roughly $34 because the exchange rate is still poor and the importer has to take his cut. The print source? Likely the old 1986 three-quarter inch umatic pan and scan master used for the key video edition. It's not unwatchable, but Fox saw no reason to strike a new widescreen HD version because it's just an old lesser known movie starring James Woods. You're probably better off taping the movie off showcase if and when it actually runs. Meanwhile, the CBC was also involved with Canada's most expensive production, Philip Borsos' version of Bethune, The Making of a Hero, starring Donald Sutherland. The 1990 Canada-China co-production that was released on tape, aired on pay TV, seen in a rare expanded CBC miniseries edit, and supported by an even more rare making of documentary. Where is the movie right now? Nowhere, because no one cares to spend the money and exploit a title even as a viable digital download. Stephen Lack says an American label expressed interest in releasing The Rubber Gun and Montreal, Maine's been digitized for release. I hope he gets lucky and finds a great label for his films, as the more time passes, the more these non-cult films fade away, literally becoming echoes in the memories of the few who remember seeing them and have old VHS tapings from television. A country's film culture, classic, arty, cult, or banal, shouldn't reside in boxes of beat-up VHS and beta tapes, nor heavily compressed YouTube rips. This is dumb. And my concern is that what lies on those old tapes will stay in boxes, bookshelves, basements, or in my case, a storage locker, because the few large companies that own most of the domestic rights and perhaps long uncirculated prints lack the desire to catalog, assess, digitize, and distribute their wares to a domestic and international market. I want to own Daryl Wasik's 1990 breakthrough film H. And while the film's been mastered in 2K, this classic of Canadian independent cinema is available nowhere. The best prints I have of perhaps Nick Mancuso's most intense performance, Ticket to Heaven, isn't a used MGM VHS rental tape, nor a pay TV copy, nor the gray market DVD source from a PAL print, but a CED disc released by MGM around 1981. This is not a laser disc, but a truly dead home video format that's basically a record that plays a movie. If you don't want your country's film culture to reside on dead media, The only solution is to wait until someone cares, wait until a title pops up almost by accident because of a package deal, wait for an American or European label to release it on disc, or wait for a rare film print screening at a Cinematheque and live with the memory of it rather than actually owning it. Real Canada's efforts mark a concerted effort to at least prove there's a market. And there is a market. For would-be buyers, the solution may be for labels to sort through their massive libraries and license these orphan films to existing and future independent home video labels. Reasonable rates for limited editions for domestic distribution. When a home video producer approaches you, the label, with a desire to release Two Solitudes, perhaps the second most in-demand Canadian film after The Grey Fox, offer them a reasonable fee. 
And not only will the film return into circulation, but you'll be kickstarting an independent specialty home video label. It's a niche market that survives with physical and digital special editions. My only question to the two to three large media companies that own almost all commercially released movies in Canada is, what have you got to lose? Coming next, more bonus media content tied to my reviews of Kino's The Mask, Blu-ray, and DVD.